this is Roger Green, host of the Surfing the Nash Tsunami podcast. This weekend, we are offering six conversations from Season 3, Episodes 28 and 29, our preview episode and wrap-up panel from the 5th International Nash Day. This conversation includes the last 15 minutes of the GLI Nash Day wrap-up panel. Jeff McIntyre asks two questions. First, he asks each of us to respond to the slogan, Stop Nash Now, with this implication that for patients, it might be enough today simply to arrest progression of fibrosis instead of focusing entirely on regression as we have done. For his last substantive question, he asks each of us to discuss something that puts a twinkle in our eyes as we consider the next three to five years of progress in the fight against fatty liver disease. Great questions, yielding interesting and diverse answers from you and Louise and me. It was an honor and privilege for Surfing Nash to be part of the biggest day on the fatty liver calendar. Both among ourselves and working with Jeff McIntyre, we got to explore a range of big issues. Yes, with a capital B for big and I for issues. We don't always talk about it on this podcast. We all had a great time doing it, and we hope you will have a great time listening to it. So sit back, listen, enjoy, learn. And when you're done, join the dialogue on our LinkedIn discussion group. Jeff McIntyre. I want to talk a little bit about um, our hashtag this year, which was Stop Nash Now. And it was the, the phrase of which there was a lot of discussion around. And frankly, the phrase, the phrase came from our discussions with the FDA around our patient-focused drug development meeting. And there was a feeling that the, so much of the drug development had been s- focused on reversal of fibrosis, on moving things back. But a lot of what we were hearing from the patients was, can we, can we just stop NASH for a minute? Can we just put it on pause? Um, give the patients a little more time in what they're doing. Um, I'm curious as your opinions on this, on kind of the notion of just kind of putting NASH and fatty liver disease on pause to give patients more time um, as it exists kind of in the current clinical and uh, drug approval environment, uh, if you will. Now, that's a very broad question, but um, uh uh, Jorn, let me ask you about that. Uh, uh, let you step up first. Jorn Schottenberg. Yeah, it, it exactly resonates what I'm discussing with my patients today when I mm, tell him that we do not have an approved drug, but he might consider to start experimental therapy within a clinical trial, which you know might not lead to resolution because I have no idea if the drug I'm telling him uh, to sign on to uh, could work, but it's something we're going to take care of you in a little more closer, a little bit more uh, intense way than a, than the primary care physician could do. And as such, we're going to delay his disease progression. At least that's my hope within the placebo arm, because I know there's certain placebo response rates. So I tell him we're going to put a break on the NASH by enrolling him into a clinical trial and trying to just slow down the progression of the disease. I think in the future, I would hope that I I use stop Nash as uh, you know when I when I fill a prescription and tell him to use a, a drug on top of his lifestyle changes and and environmental changes he might go through, uh, but at this point it's it's a let's uh, let's call it delayal strategy trying to empower the patient through helping him temporarily by applying a drug potentially within the clinical trial, and 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 stopping his disease progression because again um, for most cases today I think it's a it's a progressive, but not rapidly progressive disease. Mm-hmm. And um, you want to take the, the, the fuel from the engine or the, 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 the boost from the, from the engine a little bit. Um, Louise, let me go to you with this. Do you think, do you, have you seen that shift? Is this a shift that's appropriate for the field? Louise Campbell. Oh, I absolutely agree. Uh, and Manal Abdul and Babarak talks a lot about stabilizing disease being an outcome rather than achieving um, reversal. I think from my perspective, I see a lot more people further upstream. So for me, Stop Now, Na- Stop Nash Now is about find your F2s mm-hmm. and your just your plain fat with inflammation um, or just people with too much steatosis. Because if you reverse the steatosis, you shouldn't get NASH. So for me, Stop NASH Now is finding that earlier population so that we're attacking it from both ends. If we're treating the cirrhosis, if we're finding the F3s and F4s now by diagnostics and also the ones who should never get there. Mm-hmm. I've moved far more to liver health, and I think um, it was interesting. Caitlin was discussing in the Australian, and it was really nice to see Australia at the table for the, for International Nash Day. But they've gone more liver health rather than yeah. just Queensland hepatitis. So they look, and they've gone into the Indigenous uh, Aboriginal population. 
So they're my, now I'm not more targeting liver health because if you attack, attack liver health, you shouldn't get liver damage because you can reverse it, particularly in Naffold and Nash, that much earlier. You can sort out the hepatitis B. You can sort out the he- – so by being – sort of organ centric rather than disease centric mm. you will find the diseases if you look at the organ mm. and that for me is where i'm far more now most people as i've said earlier have poor liver health they don't have liver disease but those with poor liver health should never get liver disease because we should find it and i think you mentioned this on the uh nash congress review episode uh with roger uh, just recently as well as this notion of talking more about liver health or liver wellness and it got me thinking about where we're still wrapping our heads around and we're doing a good job of it, I think, of, of kind of defining what liver disease is, even if we're trying, we still have some fuzzy areas around F3 to F4, you know, some of that sort of aspects that we're still, we're doing a good, we've got our indicators for that, but what are characteristics of uh, liver health and liver wellness would be is something that hasn't been in the conversation as much. And I would be, I think it's something that patients would really, um, uh, resonate with. I mean, we know what a healthy heart is. We, we talk about that, and they've done a good job of promoting and discussing that. But to talk about a healthy liver, it would be interesting to see kind of where that could go. And it may be that the patient population is exactly the group that needs to be out there promoting and have that conversation. Roger, your thoughts on all that. Roger Green. So I want to take a step back, okay, first of all, to the to the rationale that you weren't started with about mm-hmm. uh, at this point in time, treading water or delaying might be a good enough strategy. Uh, it, at one point in my life, I had I found a lymph node full of melanoma in my neck, never on my skin in my neck. And at that point, I very calmly turned around and said to my wife, so here's the deal. We have to keep me alive until the drugs catch up, which in fact we did. That was 12 years ago. I'm fine. This is not so different. If you look down the, down the barrel, the drugs are coming. We should have one or two next year. Um, with the next three or four years, we should have some drugs that can produce some fairly rapid responses. We simply have to get people to take care of themselves on the way there. And uh, so I think Jorn's approach from the physician perspective is a really rational way to go after it. Now, run around to the other side of the table. Patients who want to learn how to be well, we need to give them better tools to do that. Um, I I think at that point, we're probably talking more about consumers in some ways than we are about patients because the 25% of the adult population has fatty liver disease. Those aren't all people in doctor's offices. A lot of those people never see doctor's offices. So we need to be able to communicate with them somehow as consumers so that they start to ask a question about, gee, should I get this checked out? Uh, Yeah, I know I'm a little overweight. Yeah, I know my blood sugar is a little high. Should I do something about this? Should I ask the questions my doctor isn't asking me? Mm-hmm. And I think those are the two, if you will, the two prongs that doctors who know working with patients on delay, what you're called delay strategies, which I think is a great word. Um, and on the other hand, finding consumers who are willing to be triggered as they learn about themselves. So there is a tradition on the Nash Tsunami, Roger, of you going around to all of your panelists and asking them about something good in their lives, something that's uh, positive that's happened, whether it's, uh, you know, Liverpool making it to the Champions League or, you know, Tottenham getting to a certain point or, you know, vacations had, et cetera, et cetera. Let me combine that by drawing to a conclusion here as well for to go around to each of each of you. Um, and talk about something exciting, something interesting. Maybe it's a niche. Maybe it's something that is just your particular area of interest. Or maybe it's something that we are on the verge of impacting a huge number of the population with. What's something that has you excited, something that puts a little twinkle in your eye when we talk about NASH and approaching the, the uh, approaching fatty liver disease over the next year, over the next five years or so? Roger, I'll let you start. I always finish. That's hard. Uh, but so, but I'll start here. I think the increasing reliance on consortia and collaboration is huge. Um, I think Jeff Lazarus was the first one who came on our podcast and said, hepatology can't go this alone, but we're not. And when you look at uh, Litmus and Nimble and now Nail NIT, you see efforts to aggregate large amounts of data 
and very, very, very smart people to ask basic questions in an agnostic way. The way we're starting to talk about combination therapy, the same thing. So I, I believe that if we all hang, if, if we all pull through this together, we will help a lot more patients a lot faster. And the fruits of that are only beginning to be seen in 2022. I believe that'll be an explosive area for excitement over the next two to three years. Louise? I suppose what I enjoy is, is why I left the NHS, is to everybody in the UK, it's one of the first countries that we know of, can have a fibre scan. They can have information really early to change a lifestyle or just confirmation that the lifestyle that they've got isn't causing anything abnormal on a fibre scan because anything abnormal on a fibre scan is a medical referral in any shape or form. And I think, but it is information. We didn't have blood pressure cuffs a few years ago. Now everybody has one at home who measures their blood pressure. There's nothing like measuring your blood pressure when you're stressed. Um, so I think it is driving that out because by driving that out, we, we're now cheaper than most NHS delivery systems to be able to obtain a scan. So that's what we want to do. We want to make this cheaper than a blood test eventually. And if that means that I, that gets my sparkle in my eye every time I see somebody whose lifestyle changes or who is aware of where their liver is. But we we intend to do that as often as we can and for as many reasons from clinical trials all the way through. So that that is exactly what I left the NHS for, to be able to upskill and provide diagnostics to people who need it whether or not it's fibre scan, whether it's other me mechanisms, but also education and deliver those pathways and design them. Because if we're not designing them now, we're not going to get them out when these medications come out. And there's so much work by, being done by Jean and Stephen Harrison and all of the others in getting these medications through these clinical trials. We need to be able to deliver them in the end. So we need to be designing those pathways now. So I've got a lot of twinkles. <laughs> <laughs> Jorn, I'm going to stick with the surfing uh, theme as is coming with the podcast and ask you an Americanism of uh, what brings the stoke for you these days in terms of, uh, of the fatty liver disease in Nashville. Yeah, I, I have eight minutes, right? I could talk for a long time on this because, <laughs> as Roger mentioned, there's really been, really been an incremental gain in, in, in um, activities and knowledge. If you think back uh, where we've, we've been three years ago, I think uh, it would have been unimaginable that we're talking today about not using liver biopsy in a regulatory trial uh, as an approvable endpoint. And that's happening today. FDA support suggests to have, you know, next to your non-serotic F2, F3 population trials, set up serotic trials. Do not look at histology. Um, measure the um, uh, the benefit for a patient in terms of preventing progression to uh, uh, decompensating events. So um, I think there's so many things going on. And um, if I loop this back to GLI and think about what I would want to uh, achieve together with GLI, then I would want to um, in the in the in the realm of advocacy, uh, see people stepping up, to, uh, talking, um, having an an an, an out, outing moment, you know, uh, or do you have this closing moment, saying I have liver disease. Uh, uh, from fatty liver disease, you know, if not from drinking, but from my type two diabetes. And if this is a, if this is a Congress politician in the U.S., I would applaud you. And I think uh, this is where we where we're heading and what we need because we need to raise awareness and 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 we're on a good uh, on a good uh, uh, way for uh, you know at least um, energy here to to bring this forward. Okay, I want to thank you guys for joining us. It's always a pleasure to join with the uh, Nash Tsunami team to talk about stuff. And individually, it's always great to have these conversations. And so difficult, as I said earlier on, not to just kind of jump into some of these rabbit holes and completely tear them apart. There are, there are so many great issues here for us to uh, address and to keep working on. Um, I want to thank uh, the three of you and the team for being a part of International Nash Day, continuing to support liver patients worldwide and, uh, and the battle against fatty liver disease. And now back to Roger. We hope you've enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this conversation or the entire episode, please send an email to questions at surfingnash.com. We will be back next week to preview the 2022 International Liver Congress from Easel. Until then, stay safe and surf on. We'll see you on the podcast. Bye-bye now. <laughs>